What is up, Sopranos fans? Kino here, and I am back with another Soprano log. Today we're looking at the 12th episode of the fourth season, Eloise. Now, little Carmine returns to New York to talk with his dad um, about the HUD dispute that he's having with uh, Tony Soprano. He starts to convince him to, you know, maybe go easy and not demand the full 40%. Um, but when Carmine Sr. begins praising Tony and saying that he wished that Tony was his son, uh, little Carmine gets jealous and he intentionally uh, makes his father angry against Tony. He says that Tony was acting arrogant during their meeting and this really hardens uh, Carmine Sr.'s position and makes him decide not to renege on the deal. When Johnny Sack talks to Tony and tells him that, again, they're not backing down from the 40%, Tony decides that his next move has to be retaliation, so he has Carmine's restaurant trashed. In response to this, Carmine Sr. orders the Esplanade Project shut down, so he calls the union and they have a strike, and now effectively, none of them are making any money off the Esplanade. Johnny Sack eventually approaches Tony um, and proposes indirectly that they get rid of Carmine. So he's saying that, you know, if they kill Carmine, they get rid of him, then all this unpleasantness goes away. And of course, it benefits Johnny because he'll now be the boss instead of the underboss. Uh, so Tony's really shocked that Johnny would propose this, um, but he considers it um, if it means that, you know, it's going to make him more money. Meanwhile, Furio and Carmela continue to get close. You know, Carmela helps him decorate um, his house some more. And they agree to go on a quote-unquote date to go look at tiles. Um, but we can see them almost about to kiss. And we can we can see that a romance is really sparking up. Before they do that, though, Tony and Furio go to Chief Doug Smith's casino. So it's funny they brought that location back again. Um, and Furio can't stand to see the way that Tony treats Carmela. You know, Tony talks down to Carmela all the time. And then he cheats on her with all these women. Um, so Furio is really pissed off seeing this because he's in love with her. And when they're nearby a helicopter that's going to take them home, Furio sees that he could very easily, you know, push Tony into the propeller blades and kill him. And he almost does it. He, he's almost possessed. Um, and he thinks this is one chance to get rid of Tony. He stops himself before he does it, though. But the thought that he was going to kill Tony makes him realize that, you know, he can't stay here. His love for Carmela is too deep and it's going to lead to, you know, this murder. Um, so he decides to go back to Italy. So he just leaves in the middle of the night without telling anyone. You know, Tony's pissed off to lose one of his key guys. Um, but Carmela is absolutely devastated that, you know, this person she loves is now gone from her life. Uh, meanwhile, Paulie talks to Silvio, uh, who tells him that Tony is really starting to doubt his loyalty. You know, he's not contributing as much money as he used to. And all the problems that Tony has with him, you know, last season and the thought that he might be a rat now means that Polly has really fallen out of favor with Tony. Polly responds really negatively to this, though. You know, he doesn't want to hear that news. He doesn't accept any responsibility. And in his mind, he's safe because he's got Johnny Sack on his side and he's friends with New York. Um, so he's thinking that he'll be taken care of no matter what. Later on, Polly runs into Carmine Sr. at this wedding. And I thought it was a little weird that a boss of one of the five families would be at this wedding for, um, he said it's his housekeeper's daughter. Um, it just seems like someone he wouldn't go to their wedding, but um, apparently he had nothing better to do, so he decided to go there. And Paulie runs into him and, you know, tries talking to him, um, but he realizes that Carmine has no idea who he is. And he realizes that Johnny Sack played him for a fool. So now he's in really big danger because he doesn't have New York on his side and now Tony is not happy with him. You know, he's he's not safe right now. He decides that the best course of action would be to get back in Tony's favor. And he knows that uh, his mother's friend, Min, um, who he doesn't really like, has money stashed in her house. Uh, so he breaks into her home looking for the money, um, but she discovers him there. He tries to calm her down and, you know, make her think that he's not robbing her. But she totally knows what's up with him. They end up getting into a fight. And then Polly suffocates this old woman with a pillow. I always think back to that moment where Tony said that they're soldiers and, you know, they follow codes of honor. Um, I didn't realize that that involved killing old ladies. But a really horrible action on Polly's part. He's probably going to have to do another, you know, 6,000 years in purgatory for this. 
Um, but he gets the money and he gives it to Tony. Um, and this brings him back into Tony's good graces um, now that he's given him a lot more money. Meanwhile, Carmela continues to be unhappy. You know, she's really moody with Furio gone. They go over to Meadow's new apartment for dinner and they meet her new boyfriend, uh, Finn DeTrolio, the dentist. Um, they end up talking about um, AJ's uh, school paper they did on Billy Budd. And that there's an interesting detail where, you know, he's pretty happy when he says he got a C because it's better than he usually does. And he's kind of proud of it. But then Carmela instantly dashes it and she, you know, puts down the C. And you can see AJ's smile fade right then and there. So it's just another instance of, You know, they constantly put AJ down and people wonder why he's depressed in later seasons and he has no ambition. I'm not saying AJ is perfect, but there's a lot of instances of them, you know, talking down to him and putting down his accomplishments. But they get into a discussion about uh, gay themes in the book that Carmela disagrees with. She says that there are no gay themes in the book and she gets really argumentative and it gets awkward around dinner. You know, even Tony is more charming and more progressive than she is at this dinner. And the reason for that is the same reason she gets into an argument later on with Meadow when they're at Meadow's uh, birthday lunch. Um, They go to the uh, plaza and they have tea underneath the portrait of Eloise. Um, It's their tradition that we learned about in season one. And that's where the title of this episode comes from. And on one level, you know, Carmela is just angry and upset that Furio's gone and, you know, she's lashing out. But on another hand, she's really resentful of Meadow. You know, she wants Meadow to be successful and she wants her to be independent. But at the same time, she's also really jealous of Meadow's independence and the fact that she is not tied to a man like Carmela is. So we can see that their relationship is is very complex and nuanced. I, I really like it. On the one hand, she is proud of her daughter and wants the best for her, but also resents her for that success that she can't attain. Or at least she's not willing to do the things that Meadow's doing. So a really interesting relationship between the two of them that we can see play out in this episode. Um, But yeah, that is the episode Eloise. Um, Thank you guys so much for watching and we're coming up on the season finale. This is going to be a good one. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. Thanks. New York wants 40% of my patrons across the board starting now. Hunter, Tommy Smith, Adala Alamari, George Jones, Russell, Sean, Graham, Rooftop, Rico Bellic, Heart of Markness, Broccoli, Isaiah, Placenta Juan, Logan, and Clean.